This episode of Beyond the Blade is brought to you on the hottest day of the year from the fastest circuit on the BSB calendar. Welcome to episode five, here from Thruxton. Stop that. Yeah, I am checked to the boys. Then stop the attacking. I am checked with the boys. My eyes keep walking, yeah. Just too sharp with the prize. Let's all tell me I'm awesome, yeah. Hot like fire on a pine. If you want attention on three shoes, caution. Caution. 30 years ago, it was Wayne Gardner at the Honda RVF 750 that stole the show at the Suzuka 8 Tower. This year, it was all about the Fireblade and Honda Racing UK's very own Takumi Takahashi. What does Suzuka mean to, to Honda? It is such a prestigious event. It means so much to them, as Takumi said, you know, they, they wrote me to GP here and eight hours is right up there with this. In eight hours, more easy to control because that machine has traction control, wheel really control. Track condition is very smooth, but in BSB, no traction control, no wheeling control. But I think very good for my body condition is coming better after riding here. Takumi's experience within the eight hours and experience with riding with a new fireblade. They were able to use his knowledge, direction if you like, with a bit of a setting change they had on the bike and was reconfirmed by I believe Nakajima and uh, Nikona. You're not looking to ride at 100% for eight hours, but you're looking to ride at a high pace and be as consistent as you can. If you can make that easier for the rider, for sure, you, you're going to gain a few tenths. But like I say, uh, I think Takumi's knowledge and experience certainly helped offer. It's a fast win in eight years for me and for Honda. Of course, I'm just very, very, very happy. From the bright lights of Suzuka back to showroom floors here in the UK. During the Snetterton round, Honda Racing UK riders took the chance to get along and press the flesh at John Banks Honda. Hey, we're here at John Banks Honda. Um, it's an open evening. Uh, John's put an absolutely unbelievable night on. I can't believe the crowd to turn out that's been here. It's a, a journey that's been, uh, I think, very positive um, from where we were before I, I joined the team to where we are now. Coming back to Honda was was epic. You know, the, it felt like I'm, I'm I'm a bit of a creature of habit. I'm a lot. I think I'm sort of a loyal person. Um, they are celebrating the 50th anniversary of the Honda dealer next year. Um, it's great to have John McGuinness and Tom and Glenn and Rio and Takumi here. Great questions from the, the crowd. Uh, great participation from everybody. Really, really good night. <laughs> this weekend's just been, it's been tricky. It's been tricky from the get-go. I've had a few issues from my side of things with my shoulder and one thing or another but the team haven't stopped trying all weekend to try and get me comfortable and it's uh, frustrating and, and disappointing on my behalf to not be able to reward the team with results when when the other side of the garage have had strong results with Glenn, Rio, Takumi, they've all had a good weekend so yeah, Frunkson's a circuit I like but it's just not clicked this weekend so I want my teammates to be strong, I always say that, I'm, I'm a team player and it's nice that you know, Rio scored some more points and it's been tough for Tom this weekend, He's, uh, I think he was a naughty boy in the motocross bike but here yeah, we've all done that and uh, I'm sure we'll get, he'll get fixed up soon. It was a really good weekend for us, we improved session by session and this weekend first time 
kötü. Last race fighting Liam, Picas and Daniken. Yeah, last five laps is more understand this track the faster line and more understand Pirelli tire. Also improve the my riding. Yeah, so really good. Sitting here with 36 more points than what I had on uh, Thursday evening, so really, really happy with that. I had fourth in race one, my best bike home after the three Yamahas, and a good fight with Hickey, who's very strong here. On the fire blade was really strong on the bricks into the complex, into the last corner. It's nice to pass. Uh, you know, world class opposition on the outside uh, numerous times. So, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm happy. The team worked really hard. We're 77 points safe from the drop zone of the showdown with two rounds to go. Yeah, I'm, I'm really happy. I mean, 36 points. It's been, it's been awesome. Thanks to the team. Tom Neve is halfway through his rookie season in BSB. Let's catch up with him and get his thoughts on 2022 so far. Yeah, I'd like to think I'm, I'm kind of just finding my feet. We've had some solid point scoring finishes, and but we're always towards the back end of them point scoring finishes, and I need to take that next step, which is to venture into the top ten. So I'm hoping this weekend, Cadwell Park is a track that I love. I've had a lot of success at in all the other classes before. Can be my, my turning point. I know it's a learning year as a rookie and, and this and that, but I've had three years of experience on these bikes and I was pretty close at certain tracks last year to the lap times, but there's a reason why the Superbike boys and this class is the hardest championship in the country, because if it was that easy, every man and his dog would be having a go. So it's been an eye-opener, that's for sure. So yeah, just get my head down and see what can happen. With Tom, what we want to see is progression um, and where that puts us at the end of the year, you know, we'll take that for his first sort of, you know, rookie year, if you like, in the, in the Superbike. As long as we're progressing and developing, getting stronger, being able to adapt and work with the bike, work with the team, then that's the right step forward that we need. As long as we give him the confidence and the feel that he's wants and is looking for out of the bike, then we're making progress. The obvious differences between a Superstock bike and a Superbike are the slick tyre, the suspension, more horsepower, a lighter bike, all these things you think are just going to contribute to a faster lap time and I thought bolt them in my bike and I'm just going to shave off one, two seconds a lap just like that and I'll be right where I need to be right up the front. And it just does not work like that unfortunately. Obviously the bikes are capable of going them two seconds a lap faster but in order to get that feel and an understanding of the bike and, and unlock its true potential, it, they need to be ridden in such a different way. And that's what I'm finding difficult, having stepped up from what I've been used to. So getting my head around that has been the biggest thing. And surprisingly, the tyre, which offers more grip, it's a softer compound, is, that's been the biggest difference for me, is uh, getting, getting that feel f for that tyre. So I've got a great team around me and uh, we we're figuring it out. I'd like the progression to have been a little bit quicker than what it is, but you can't run before you can walk, and it's just baby steps at the minute. Ask any of the riders at the sharp end of the BSB grid, and they'll all say the same thing. You can't win a championship until you've made the showdown. This round at Snetterton is absolutely crucial for Glenn to do exactly that. So Glenn's qualified for race one in fourth position. Again, if you're looking for that showdown spot, he's in the right place to do exactly what he needs to do. Takumi Takahashi snuck one in as well. He's away in seventh. Shaping up to be a great weekend. Weather looks like it's going to hold out. Let's see what happens. Oh, fast life, the fast living. race was uh, was really fun from a, a race point of view. Um, 
And before the safety car came out, I think we had just did our the 47.8. I felt the, the race was swinging, you know, so I've cleaned up my tire a little bit. Okay, we can fight really, really hard for a win here. Uh, the safety car coming out is actually something that seems to affect me, Tom, and uh, Rio and Takumi. Just the bikes are all different, and when we lose a little bit of tire heat, we we, we struggle with a little bit of entry uh, under steer. Yeah, it doesn't turn the way I want it to turn. But the last two laps, the tires I came back, and you know, I've, my last lap, I think I was a couple of tins under my best. I've tried so hard. I tried to surprise Tyron in the last corner. I probably could have passed him in the penultimate one, but I wanted to pretend I wasn't there. So when I darted to the apex, uh, his experience and uh, he's a British champion showed how he guarded the, the apex. With regards to the decision, uh, the lead rider is who controls it. The lead rider is a rider who gets punished when they drop too far back from a safety car to create a sequence of corners. The last thing I can do when you accelerate out of a corner um, it's shut the gas. Everyone's front wheels are like you can't you can't take a vis of Atson. It's completely dangerous. The championship's great. It's ran impeccably most of the time. But I'm got it. But the most important thing is that the Honda is uh, competitive against uh, two lads and two packages that are working very good. And I think we all take confidence that the bikes uh, going the right direction. Mixed emotions, but mostly positivity. The team have made the showdown. Glenn will be happy tomorrow. I'm not entirely convinced he'll be happy when he goes to bed tonight with that decision. We move on, off to Alton. I hope you've enjoyed episode five of Beyond the Blade. Make sure to follow all of Honda Racing UK's social media channels, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks very much.